Hi, today we're going to be talking about magnetic beam switching tubes. They are a decimal counting tube that was invented by Haydu Brothers in the 1950s, somewhere around 1953 or 54, and later Burroughs bought them out and then they turned it into a large product line. They are a decimal counting tube that was designed to replace the Decatron. Um, Decatrons are well known by the Nixie enthusiasts because they light up and spin and do all kinds of interesting things. Um, these do not do anything interesting looking, although they are much better at counting than a Decatron is. They go much faster. They will get up to uh, 10 megahertz in certain models. Um, we're going to start here in chronological order. Let me switch to macro mode. Ooh, there we go. Okay. These two here on the left, the red one and the and the, the gray one behind to the right of it, those are the Burroughs 6700. That's the original model of magnetic beam switching tube that was invented by Haydu. The uh, Haydu models look a little bit different. They have a orange label and the cap on the top is, is different. Um, but functionally they are absolutely identical. Um, the part we believe it was probably internally known as an MO10 um, based on some internal Burroughs documents we've read, and we're pretty sure it was also referred to as an HB101. That would have been the Burroughs part number, we think. Um, 6700 is like the registered series part number. Um, these tubes count at 2 megahertz, which is twice as fast as any known Decatron. Um, Decatrons don't go any higher than about 1 megahertz, and that's only for an extremely few. Most Decatrons operate in the 4 to 20 kilohertz range depending on the model. Um, over here we have these three right here. That's the Burroughs 6701. It looks almost identical to Burroughs 6700. Um, the only difference being that it's a low voltage variant and uh, only runs at 1 megahertz and it has uh, support for something called grid zero which means that it has it's basically a faster resetting function than the earlier 6700 does not have. Right here, that one right there that looks also almost exactly like a 6700, that's an MO10R. That is the world's fastest counting tube. It counts at 10 megahertz. Um, it accomplishes this because it has um, resistors built into it that reduce the lead capacitance on certain components inside it and give it a faster counting speed. Um, there's another model of 10 megahertz beam switching tube called the BD309 that came out a little bit later and it's basically exactly identical to an MO10R but it has a shield much like this guy right there that is a BD301 a BD301 is basically basically a 6700 with a metal uh, mu metal shield on it that's uh, MU not MOO the uh, notice right there look at the bottom um, beam switching tubes all have the same basic pinouts um, there's three different pinout configurations but they're all extremely similar um, beam switching tubes have 26 pins coming out of them and depending on what model they either use 25 or 26 of them um, they have more pins than just about any other kind of vacuum tube that we know of um, you can see right on the outside of the envelope. The envelope sticks out the bottom in the middle there and then there's a there's a ring of a layer of silicone around the glass and then there is a metal ring around that. That is the actual magnet itself. It has a cylindrical tube magnet that encircles it which is actually identical to the magnets on these right here only there's no shield around them. If you look there there's a bunch of silicone filler around the magnet and then the metal shield and these are non-magnetic unlike these guys right here which produce a pretty strong magnetic field and that's why they're all spaced apart like that because if I get them any closer they're gonna start knocking each other over and then right here we have the BD316 and BD316-1 these are a slightly later beam switching tube they still have an external magnet they're still basically constructed the exact same way the only difference is is that they have a more compact slender um, a glass envelope which means that the entire diameter of the tube comes down you know the, the magnet is a smaller diameter and the shield is a smaller diameter and then after they made those for a very short period of time 
they started producing these. This is the Burroughs BX1000 beam X switch and in this particular type of tube the instead of having a large magnet encircling the whole tube and taking up a massive amount of space and weight we have ten tiny rod shaped magnets which are located inside the tube uh, excuse me inside the tube and we have two different variations of the BX1000 um, they have slightly different internal construction the earlier ones on the left and the later ones on the right and over here these are more BMX switch tubes right here only these have a shield on them they came later we have the uh, BX2012 that's an extremely rare tube right there it is a shielded BX1000 that has been according to the Burroughs documentation specially tested for decoding BCD we don't really know what that means but we're pretty sure it's marketing hype um, right here we have the BX2005 um, it's a descendant of the BX of the BX1000 as well also shielded we don't know what its specifications are it's a fairly common variety you'll see it turn up places like like eBay and so forth um, more often than a lot of the others but we don't know what its specifications are and right here this one also looks just like the BX2012 or the BX2005 but it is not it is a Burroughs BX4000 that is one of the rarest types of beam switching tube like the BX2012 um, it is a uh, low low voltage variant and it has a much lower operating voltage than most other beam switching tubes um, most beam switching tubes are designed to operate directly in conjunction with the Nixie tube you hook the beam switching tube directly to the Nixie tube with almost no intermediate circuitry and it drives it that's one of the major advantages of uh, beam switching tubes over decatrons decatrons have an operating voltage which is significantly higher than a beam switching tube over here we have a couple beam switching tube circuits. Um, you almost never see these turn up. Um, this is a uh, DC106A decade counter module. That right gigantic box right there basically replaces the function of a decatron. Um, but it has a direct Nixie tube decimal readout. And in the back it has a somewhat rusted BD301. And on the back it's got a couple uh, a couple like computer rated 12 AU7s or whatever they are some kind of some kind of triode and lots of resistors those resistors right there those are the spade resistors that that make the MO10R so much faster by putting them inside the tube over here this is a 101 P479 Burroughs programmer um, we have no idea what system it's for um, we think it was made about 1965 and possibly derated somewhere around 1971 maybe um, given the, the date code and some uh, the date that's stamped on the side of the of the unit um, this is the most complicated intact beam switching tube circuit we've ever seen it has four BX 2004s and one BX 2005 and we don't know we don't have the, the specifications on either of those and right there you'll see one transistor it's got a couple more in there but this one is literally stuck up on a pedestal it is 1965 after all and it's got a few other tubes sitting down in there another BX2004 way down inside there and the red capped one right there is the BX2005 uh, unfortunately it looks like this was left in somebody's shed for several years and it's got some some rust and stuff on it um, but there you go Magnetic beam switching tubes. Thanks for watching.